Hello everyone, today I'm taking a look at the Peladen W04 AMD Ryzen 5700U Mini PC. Its claims to fame are that it is cheap, it has two NICs, and 8-core uh, 16 threads. So, if that sounds good to you, come along on this adventure. Forgot my review disclaimer. Peladen sent me this unit to review. No money changed hands, and they won't see this review until you do. I do have affiliate links in the description, those will send me a kickback. You don't have to use them if you don't want. Now on with the video. So let's take a look at what we got in the box. This little ring here around the box doesn't actually have a picture of the unit on it, which is interesting. It does have important stuff like the serial number, and it's a 16 gig RAM, 512 gig SSD, so there's that. The unit itself is in a nice plastic wrap. And here's what we have. Peladen. It's kind of missing like a vowel there, but whatever. Looks like it's easy to take the case off from here. Well, it sure is. So we got one stick of RAM, so that's a single DDR4 3200 sodium. So I could put a second one in there for 32 gigs that I want, I guess. This looks like the SSD, which has a little built-in heat sink. So yeah, we'll take a look at that in a bit. Front panel then, I've got a peel. Orange power button, two USB 3s, a Type C, and I really want to know if this does video as well. I'm really curious. That'd be really helpful for me. And audio output. Bottom, we have some mounting holes, I guess, to use for a VESA mount and the usual information plate. Backside, we have USB 2, DisplayPort, HDMI, and two LANs. I don't remember what speed these guys are. And DC. Power brick. Looks like we've got 19 volts. 3.4 amps. This little guy looks like a SATA cable, so he's going from some flat flex connector to a SATA, so that's for a hard drive. So in here we can see the back sides of all the ports. So there's the Ethernet transformers. Again, there's two memory channels. They only have one memory channel populated from the factory, so the other one's free for you. Also means your memory bandwidth will be half until you do that upgrade. Up on here, that's the little flat flex for the SATA port. Here we have the M.2 drive it came with, and underneath that there's an M.2 Wi-Fi. And it looks like the antennas cables are going out. Well, there's one antenna cable, and the other one goes out there. Somehow I also completely missed that this includes a VESA mount too. So you can mount it on the back of your monitor. So now I'm plugged in with my USB KVM. About to power this guy on. I'm just hooked up to the HDMI output now. I don't remember if this came with software or not. I know it supports Windows, and I'm going to actually end up running Windows on it for my eventual use case. But if it doesn't have anything, I boot up Linux. So what is the chance I'm going to be able to set this thing up without a Microsoft account? I mean, I have a Microsoft account, but I just, I hate creating cloud-only accounts into devices. I want the local administrator to be a local account. Oh. Go back. So while Windows does its thing, after I'm done testing this guy, this guy is actually going to go to the school, and it's going to be the PC for the laser cutter. So we have a laser cutter and a CNC router, and some of the software for that is licensed, so we can't just install it on every student laptop. So we need a dedicated computer, and it's going to be this one. So if you guys wonder why I review so many mini PCs or NAS units, it's either because I'm trying to build a cluster of the world's worst N100 mini PCs for world domination, or some of these things I have legitimate use cases for. So this thing is running Windows now, but I want to do some of the usual hardware diagnostics I usually do in Linux. So I'm going to boot this thing up into Linux so we can take a look at the CPU, um, LSPCI, and LSPCI is a big one that I like to look at because that shows you a lot of hardware information. So I'm going to do that now. So let's see what function key gets us into the BIOS. One potential problem to having a Mac is I don't have a delete key, so I can't press the delete key to get in the BIOS. There we go. So I guess the key was delete, the only one I couldn't do. Let's see. Boot override U. So I don't remember if this guy had a 2.5 gig NIC or what Wi Fi module it came with, so we're going to figure that out with Linux tools. Okay, so LSPCI going on here. So it's like one of our NICs is a Realtek. 8125, two and a half gig, and the other one is an 8111 gigabit, so that's perfectly fine. So just wrapping up, we have a Realtek two and a half gig, 
a Realtek 1 gig, a Realtek Wi-Fi, and a Realtek Bluetooth. I think the SSD controller is also made by Realtek as well. Also, since it's not labeled which port is which, I plugged an Ethernet cable into one of the ports, and it looks like that one came up as ENP2S0, which was formerly ETH1, which is the 1 gigabit NIC. So the port closer to HDMI is the 1 gigabit NIC, and the port closer to the power port is the 2.5 gig. In case you're wondering, the built-in SSD is running at 8 gigatransfers per second. That's PCIe Gen 3 by four lanes. So that's the capability of the SSD, and it's also the speed it's running at. So I put in a PCI Gen 4 Samsung NVMe just to see what the link capabilities are. And you can see here the SSD has a link cap of 16 gigatransfers, which is Gen 4 by four lanes, but the device is only running at eight gigatransfers. So this port only supports PCIe Gen 3, which makes sense because that's what the 5700U supports. So one problem you might have is that this is magnetic here, and I was taking the screw out, and it just jumped over and stuck to that magnet. So now I had to get that screw out from the bottom of that magnet. So while retrieving the screw with tweezers, I found the magnet is actually not glued in. And neither are these guys. They just kind of, oh, yeah, they just kind of fall out. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit sketchy. So now I figured out the hardware. Now I want to test if the Type-C port can do display output, because that would like make my day. So I gotta go find a cable for that. I'll be right back. So I got the monitor hooked up to HDMI out. Didn't hook up display port. Got the hub out of the hub mouse to convert Type-C to HDMI to the HDMI capture. Let's see if we get an output. You know, I got an output on the Type-C and not on the monitor, which is kind of cool. So this will be perfect for me if I can use the Type-C as a third monitor. So for me, I'm going to use this for VEX Robotics competitions. I need three displays for hosting. So I have one monitor I use for OBS. That's a rather large one. That's display port, so I can plug that in. I've got another monitor that goes over HDMI, and that is for the timer put by the field. And I have a third monitor, which is the, the smart keyboard. And that's where I actually put the timing and scorekeeping system, because they have a tiny little window that they use. It's not that big, so it fits perfectly on a little keyboard. And that's Type-C, so I can plug that in here. I can plug DisplayPort into my big monitor and HDMI into my timer monitor. It's great. And I got four USB ports, which is plenty for the field controls I need and the mice and things like that. I guess I could use a Bluetooth mouse too. So it's great. So I'm going to start a 10-minute Cinebench run, multi-core, and we'll see what temperature we get to. So it ran Cinebench R24 for 10 minutes. That's like a stress test time. I can feel air coming out of the unit, so the fan's running, but none of the surfaces are hot or even warm. They're all plastics. So they're not going to transmit that much heat, but air is coming out. It's not that hot. It's riding the 25-watt CPU power limit. So CPU ran up to 25 watts, stayed at 25 watts, core frequencies dropped to maintain 25 watts, and the temperature ended up at like not even that hot. It ended up at like 53 degrees Celsius, which is nothing. So in a normal ambient environment, this will not be limited by CPU. Now I'm going to try running GPU and CPU test at the same time, and I think that should push it up to about 35 watts. So let's see what that looks like. The test has been running now for, oh, I don't know, about four minutes. And it looks like it hit 35 watt power target, maybe a little bit higher than 35 watts, for about a minute and a half. And it didn't even get that hot. It only got to 49 Celsius, or 59 Celsius. And now it's lowered down to a 25 watt power target, and it's just kind of staying there. So the CPU and GPU core clocks are reducing to hold 25 watt power target, even though we are nowhere near a thermal limit. So this behavior to me seems like it's essentially copied from a laptop to the laptop CPU. And laptops are usually very concerned with long-term power limits for both battery life, um, which this is plugged in, and also so they don't get too hot of a surface where people touch them, because that can be dangerous. But in this case, it seems like the cooling solution is working perfectly fine. It's only at 52 degrees right now, so it doesn't need to power limit, but it is anyway. So what do I think about this little guy? The W04 with the 5700U. So I'll start off by saying, as of the recording of this video on Amazon, this is listed for $269.99, $270. Of course, prices do change. Prime week or Prime Day is next week. Sometimes prices go up or down leading to Prime Day in 
weird marketing ways. But that's the price right now. For that price, you get the AMD Ryzen 5700U, which is an 8-core, 16-thread, pretty rocking laptop processor with pretty decent graphics too, especially for an iGPU. So that's what the processor is. For I.O., they're essentially taking the I.O. from that processor and bringing it straight out to connectors. So we have a mix of USB 2, USB 3, Type-C, which can also do DisplayPort Alt Mode, DisplayPort HDMI, two Realtek NICs, one of which is 2.5 gig, and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So that's a pretty good assortment of hardware for a small home lab box. Um, the two NICs, and actually pretty much all of the PCIe devices, are on their own IMU, IOMMU group. So if you want to do PCIe pass-through, you could pass through one of these two NICs, or both of them, I guess, um, separately. The Wi-Fi card is also separate as well, and the Bluetooth card is USB, so that's easy to pass through. This particular model came with 16 gigs of RAM. That is only single channel, so if you're planning on upgrading, that's a good thing, because then you get dual channel. If you're not planning an upgrade, it's going to be a bit slower on memory bandwidth. It came with an SSD, which identifies as a Realtek controller, so I have no idea who made it. And it's under a heatsink, so I'm not going to take a look. But it's PCIe Gen 3x4, 512 gig with this model. They also sell a 1 terabyte version. And considering that the entire unit was only 270 bucks, that's not bad. It also came with Windows for that price, too. So if you don't need Windows, maybe they have other versions. I have no idea. I didn't even look. But in my particular case, Windows is a bonus. So, because I was going to run Windows anyway. The processor is limited to 25 watt long term. The CPU plus GPU can spike up to about 37, 38 watts for a minute or two but not for very long. The cooling solution is more than adequate for 25 watts. 25 watts is not a lot. Nothing on the box gets hot. It all runs fine. So that is my analysis. If you have any questions, you can comment down below. If you want to buy one, I have an Amazon affiliate link down below as well. Um, I have a Discord server where we mostly talk about networking and home lab stuff. So maybe someday this video or this uh, so maybe someday this little guy will end up in like a cluster full of terrible mini PCs. He's not that bad, but uh, I have a large collection of these now I'm amassing, and they're all going in a cluster someday. So stay tuned for that. Um, I have a Kofi if you like supporting my channel. I really appreciate that. And I'll see you guys on the next adventure.